Hey, good morning. Uh, so we're out here today at the Ontario Science Centre. Uh, we've come out to have a look at all the exhibits that they've got on hand here. Um, what kind of sciencey things we can learn? What can we, what can we take in? Um, we've got a few exhibits out here already. Now this is um, about how sound travels through here, and you've got silent points inside, and they want you to crawl through that. Um, just down the end, we've got two uh, metal beams to determine whether uh, the change in temperature, these beams can show you that by the contraction of, uh, of the elements in there. Um, so that's really cool. We're going to have some real awesome exhibits in here, hopefully. Um, this is included on the uh, Toronto City Pass. Um, it is an option to do. You have to, much like a lot of the city passes you can choose a couple of different options um, so it was either this or the zoo on the city pass now we're going to be doing both of those so we bought this separately and it was 22 canadian dollars which at the time of conversion uh, is about 13 uh, british pounds so that's not too bad it's quite a quite a good uh quite a good price actually um, now you do have um certain health requirements at the moment you need to show them proof with passports and things like that um, in order to get in um, so we've got to bear that in mind um, it's just the way it is at the moment um, and if you're comfortable with that come if you're not then unfortunately you're not going to be able to go inside um, it just is as simple as that here um, but Let's go inside, let's see what we can learn. We're really excited about this. We were speaking to the gentleman over there. Uh, he said it can take about 45 minutes just to walk through it, um, but you can do it up to an hour, hour and a half if you take in a little bit more of the things. There's a couple of things that are closed due to the current environment, but other than that, it's mostly open. So let's go and see what we can find. So we've got some health questions here, and then your proof that's required for anybody over the age of 12 years old. So as a UK resident, uh, we have uh, QR codes to be scanned in the UK, but that's not available over here. Ours don't scan for, for those reasons, um, but we were just able to show uh, our proof from the NHS app, as well as an ID, and that was enough. We've got lots of lockers around here. So if you need to bring all your stuff, but there's a car park right there, which is 12 Canadian dollars. So you don't really need to bring all your stuff, but they look cool. Look at these lockers. Where's the poacher? <laughs> so we've come in on level two. That's where you start. We've got a whole bunch of, uh... oh. It's well up to date. Yeah, very up to date. We're looking at the structure of uh... what's going on right now. I'm not gonna say the word because you've heard it enough. Yeah, this is uh, quite modern. <laughs> Interesting. So look at this astronaut glove. Very cool. Uh, we do have the bug lab here. Um, this isn't open at the moment. Got a little detour set up uh, just around the side there. Um, but we'll uh, try and put a little bit of information down in the bottom description so you guys can see uh, what it's about. Um, but the gentleman here says it's really cool from the previews he's seen, so making us a little bit jealous already. Uh, so that bug exhibit, uh, it's a traveling one. It's developed by Weta. Um, now, you may have heard of Weta. They are the people that worked on a lot of the um, special effects, um, physical special effects, swords and things like that from Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit series. They've done other things as well. They're based over in New Zealand. Um, but this is a traveling exhibit. So it's here until March and then it's moving on to San Francisco. It's come over from New Zealand, so that's quite good. They do have another temporary exhibit here, um, but this is essentially gonna replace, um, and that'll be an ice age exhibit, so we're gonna go and see that shortly as well. 
bit more of an overview of the bug exhibit. You see lots of uh, really cool props. Looks like there's going to be a lot going on here, so I'm very sad that we're not going to be able to see this. Weirdly, to go up in numbers, we're actually going down. So we started on, well, one is at the top, then it's two, three, four, five, six, going down. It's very strange. Yeah, so uh, entrance exit, level two. Uh, you've got an oil, imperial oil auditorium and a conference room on uh, level one. Level three is just a, a, an outdoor terrace. We've now come to level four. We got five and six, so there's a lot more going on on six. Uh, that's where the uh, temporary ice age exhibit is. Um, but let's go through number four first. Uh, if you wanted to have a look at the map for the area, um, hit this QR code and a French version as well. So take your pick. It's got a small exhibit here about the uh, lunar lander uh, on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And this is a scale model of Saturn V as well. These are recovered fragments of the heat shields from Apollo 10 and 11. Amazing. With some IDs from uh, some of the uh, administrators and whatnot that worked on these launches. We've got another small exhibit here of some uh, radio, uh, radio, radio related um, items and paraphernalia, things like that. Um, so you've got the um, the speakers, the actual radios themselves. You've got a number of the uh, Morse code machines as well. You go over here, you've got an amateur radio broadcasting room. Um, I imagine this is normally open because these windows slide across and you do uh, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot here. We've got one area here called Kids Spark. Um, Active Jest. This is in uh, France, or Kids Spark in English. In French, sorry, not in France. The kids eight and under. Okay, I don't think we're allowed in this area then. So we're not actually allowed in there um, because you have to be accompanied by um, a child in order to, and we don't have a child with us. Um, so I can't go in and I can't record anything, obviously for privacy reasons and things like that. But you do have quite a cool hands-on exhibit here for children to be entertained. There's no children in here at the moment because we're in school times, um, but there is another real cool exhibit next to it. Keep the ball rolling. So you can typically pop a ball into one of the uh, one of the chutes and it will be carried all the way through this. You see the ball over there in the uh, in the lift. So that ball's just being lifted up and then it begins its descent. So it stops every few seconds whilst this wraps around. And then equal and opposite reactions. It unravels itself. And then it goes a bit further down goes to the other side, does the same. Uh, so we could be here for a while if we wanted to watch this go through the hole. Oh, we're going to bounce, boing, and straight in. Pretty cool. Took a while to get there, but pretty cool. Oh, wow. Oh. 
Tuh, hal ya. What's this one here then? Oh, it's going to be a xylophone. That's the best one so far. Musical one, this is. small exhibit here about gardening in space and how hard it is with no soil or sunlight got it cramped quarters no gravity um, obviously you do have gravity here but good test we've got a model replica of the space shuttle and this is the uh, Columbia 37 meters in length typically um, with a 24 meter wingspan uh, you can see little uh, I don't know how well it pops up on video but you can see the little um, heat shields over there and then the arm to pull the astronaut out got some of the space gear that they wear when they are up there being an astronaut. This exhibit is dedicated to uh, Chris Hadfield. And you've got his uh, handprints here. And he was the uh, first Canadian to walk in space and the first Canadian commander of the International Space Station. So that is, they've got a lot of pride in that, I'd imagine. Uh, but they've even got a, a mural of the gentleman there, so. Yeah, they take a lot of pride in that. Head into La Space, space the planetarium. A number of um, women astronauts are represented here, which is really good to see. A number of females. Planetarium. This is a simplified model of the Earth, Moon, Sun system. The Earth revolves around the oh, Sun, okay. making a full orbit once every 365 and a quarter days. That is called a year. The Earth's orbit is not a perfect circle. It is 3% closer to the Sun in January than in July. This is them uh, how showing you how the orbit happens. The sun in July. And, and you've got 365 and a quarter days to do the full rotation. Four of those make up an extra day, that's why we have the leap year. So we've got a representation here of the entire solar system. And all of the planets moving around and uh, orbiting the sun. We've got loads of different elements, loads of uh, parts of meteorite, moon. All these have uh, fallen to Earth at some point. It's, it's very smooth on one side, and then rough on the other. So yeah, these have all uh, all fallen to Earth. So when he comes back down, that's when he feels the weightlessness. This thing could do with being bigger. Oh yeah. Hmm. Hey, Space Ace, here's your mission. Fly to the flashing blue lights. Steer the rocket chair towards the flashing light. Aim the front circular pad of the chair over the orange target. Reach as many targets as you can before the time runs. You've got two minutes. Zero. System OK. System OK. Air activated. Air activated. Final target 4. Happy air activated. Final target 4. Happy air activated. 
Using the thrusters to uh, get to the Find target four. Ah, Find target four. Ah, System shut down. We got three. That was such a cool thing. So I was using the thrusters to find my way around space and get to the targets, complete my missions on my spacewalks. That's basically how they steer the spaceship. They use cold air thrusters to uh, direct them through space. So we've experienced that now. We're now astronauts. Oh, look at these. Look at all these carvings. Donated to the Ontario Science Centre by the Ontario Woodcarvers Association. And the maple leaves, and then you've got little bits of representation in the maple leaves. Well made, and this one is, they're both incredibly detailed. So we're outside in the nature escape. Uh, and this is down on level five slash six. We're actually a bit confused what level we're on, to be honest. Beware of the wildlife. Don't feed the birds, even though they've got bird feeders out. We've got the outdoor nature walk um, you've got a representation of a nest by a weaver bird um, just down the back there you've got a bit of a climbing frame a lot of that's closed off at the moment uh, due to everything going on but this is a nice chill area that I can imagine is really beautiful in the summer especially um, we're looking at about five six degrees C at the moment so <laughs> it's very cold out here Western Family Innovation Center. We've got a model of the sun here, the death of the sun. This is the Ontario Western Youth Innovation Award. Um, so this is a, an award that is given out to um, some of the young inventors here in our on the province of Ontario. Good to see some good representation here of uh, young scientists. So this is the AstraZeneca Human Edge, the Living Earth, the, t the Telus Rainforest and the Science Arcade. It's got a, a rock climbing exhibit. I don't know how good I'll be at doing this when I'm dressed like this, but let's give it a go. Not very good. It's not very good, no, not in socks. This exhibit's all about birth, conception, and uh, human life as a, uh, as a baby, and how they're born. This guy looks creepy. Wouldn't be Canada without some hockey. Um, so this is what they would have worn back then. Um, 70 years ago versus what they wear now during the game. It's <laughs> quite a bit different. You can see why there were a lot of injuries back then. And so this talks about um, the advent of modern medicine and modern technologies to move us, uh, keep us healthy. And you've got a load of medical instruments here um, on how to do surgery. This is uh, the arteries, the veins, all the neurons uh, that a human being has. Uh, it's really quite creepy to see actually. You can light up the individual 
uh, organs of the body. So where do these joints appear on the body? So we've got this ball and socket joint. Now this would appear on the shoulders of ball and socket joints, but also are the hips not ball and socket joints as well? Use this joint when you move your thumb to your palm. So doing that is that kind of movement. Pivot. Where do you think this is? This is when you shake your head to say no. And you've got a hinge, your knees and fingers. Immovable. Some joints don't move. They're found where bones are tightly joined. The bones in your skull and hips slowly fuse together. That's going to be firm. And then you've got this glide in one. And that's the joints where ribs meet the bones of your spine and allow movement for you to breathe. Ooh. This is an elephant heart. Wow. Huge, isn't it? This is the tallest man of all time. Uh, so he was 8 feet 11 inches. He was born in uh, Alton in Illinois in 1918. Uh, how do I measure up against him? Well, probably be a good girlfriend for him, but uh, nothing else. <laughs> wow. What can you read in the bones of these skeletons? You can learn the sex, the age, the tall and short of it, how, uh, how tall the person is, and their lifespan as well. So the skeleton on the left is female, Come on. because of the brow structure. And uh, both skeletons lift to about 40. The left skeleton may be older due to its fused skull bones. That AstraZeneca human edge section was really good. Um, it was good to see how humans' bodies develop to give them that added ability uh, and, and fight these everyday tasks. How we've developed um, science to better adapt ourselves as well. Um, so that was really cool. We're now heading into the ice uh, well, we're going to be heading into the ice exhibit in a second. We've got a couple more little bits and pieces before that. Um, but that's the temporary exhibit that I was telling you about before. So this is the temporary exhibit, Planet Ice, Mysteries of the Ice Age. So why is ice important to our planet? We're in the perfect place for it in, uh, in Canada, such an icy area. Um, so beginning uh, 715 million years ago and last until 660 million years ago, the Earth was completely frozen over. A giant snowball from space uh, and that meant that the, uh, the sun was reflecting back so this is to talk about uh, greenhouse gases and how they're affecting uh, the amount of ice that we have on the planet now as you can see at the top the greenhouse gases ruining the atmosphere we can't reflect as much of that sunlight and heat back into uh, back into space so you've got this here uh, showing us how uh, man adapted to the cold weather uh, so bigger noses barrel chests wider hips shorter legs and arms um, how these people were built to withstand the cold weather as you can see good model representation and here we've got a number of animals that are specially adapted to the cold weather with their really thick fur A wolverine and an arctic fox. This wolverine looks cool. 
this is an American lion, currently extinct. The American lion was an enormous predator, reaching the length of a small car and weighing upwards of 350 kilograms. Look at these mega animals. This is a bear. Saber-toothed cat. We've got Mastodon. Wouldn't you be afraid to meet one out in the forest? Whoa. So just at the end of the ice exhibit here, got a few little bits of uh, information about what's being lost, um, how the ice is melting, how it's disappearing and what we're losing um, with the change of the atmosphere and climate change and, uh, and things like that, how much the water levels are rising and the land that's going to be lost as you can see. So we're about to jump into an exhibit called the Hair Raising Experience. Um, this isn't going to work for me because, well, I don't have a lot of hair. So Becky has very kindly volunteered to show you guys uh, <laughs> what she's going to look like and how silly she's going to look. I'm excited for this. This is going to be really funny. Shake your hair. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Give it a shake to the back like a shampoo. Oh. Oh my god. Give me some L'Oreal. Give me some purple essences. <laughs> Head and shoulders. Shampoo. Love it. And oh, hold it. Wow. Say cheese over here. It's your paparazzi. <laughs> oh, that's really cool, that one. <laughs> here we've got um, a section of various hands on exhibits that you can play around with. Design a human. You got something over here that shapes the body. Light hearts at a concert. Grab hold and watch what happens. One of the final things that we can see just before we leave. This is really cool because you never get to see the roots of a tree. So they've got a cross section of the tree here. Um, and you see just how intricate they are uh, in order to get those nutrients in the soil. Really cool. So that's it for our time at the Ontario Science Centre. Now we had a really fantastic time. I don't think, we were just discussing that I don't think it's necessarily like if you're a tourist and you're looking for like real Canadian specific things, this is not really the place where you've kind of got these science centres anywhere. The hands-on exhibits were cool, uh, seeing Becky's hair just go crazy she looked like she'd touched the plug socket and just been electrocuted which is amazing um they do have an imax cinema here as well now tickets to the imax cinema are an additional 12 dollars on top or you can um pay for it in a uh, joint ticket for the two uh, and then it's 28 dollars um so i'll put down in the in the bottom corner how much that is converted to uh, our lovely great british pounds um but it's worth checking it out we were told that it, if you just walk through it it's going to take 45 minutes we we're actually here for about two and a quarter hours in the end so yeah i mean it's a good good way to spend a couple of hours just chill walk around enjoy and learn some new things as well um, the hands-on exhibits were really awesome um, but if you if you did enjoy the video uh, give us a thumbs up do appreciate it. it does help me out a lot and if you could hit that subscribe button the bell icon to be notified when we post all new videos that'll be fantastic See you on the other side. Thanks.